Hey there, welcome to Viewpoint Christian Academy, where we have been helping families meet their Christian education goals since 1984 and focusing on spirit, character, academics. We believe that the child's relationship with Jesus is the first priority. Everything else is secondary. Today, in our Monday moment, I'm going to address an idea and a concept about spiritual training in the home. And it's going to focus on something that I refer to in my book, Destination Wisdom, Discovering the Journey, as the law of the home. Stay tuned. So what is the law of the home? Well, the law of the home is something that I believe that the book of Proverbs expounds upon significantly and provides an, a, a strategy or a, or a plan for helping a child to discover the fear of the Lord. So what is the law of the home? Well, we know from the book of Proverbs that wisdom is the principal thing, meaning it should be the priority of our life, that getting wisdom should be the most important thing. And really, the book of Proverbs was a book written by a father, directed and addressed to the son, to try to show him how to avoid the pitfalls of life, yes, but also primarily, not just to avoid making mistakes, but how to, number one, and prior, primarily focus his attention upon God and how to get wisdom. Wisdom is living life the way that God wants you to live. If you get wisdom, you get it because of God, because the source of wisdom is God. In fact, the, the very beginning, the fear of the Lord, the Bible tells us in Proverbs, is the beginning of wisdom. So how do you direct your child towards wisdom? How do you direct your child towards living the way God wants them to live? You have to first help them to discover and understand the fear of the Lord. And you have at your disposal a very valuable tool called the law of the home. I want to try to expound upon that for just a minute, but let me read um, uh, a verse for you. I found out of Proverbs chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. It says this, My son, hear the instruction of your father, and forsake not the law of your mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto your head, and chains about your neck. So the Bible here is describing, and Proverbs does this over and over and over again, it continually describes uh, the instruction of the father and the law of the mother. Basically, what is that referring to? Well, if we call it the law of the home, then what it's really referring to are the rules and the standards and the priorities that moms and dads have in their home to help lead, guide, and direct their children. That's really what it is. And the, the, the writer of Proverbs is continually exhorting the son, the child, to embrace that instruction, embrace that law, because it's what's best for him. It's what's going to help him. Now, treat it like fine jewelry, chains about your neck, right? Treat it like something, something uh, that, that is really fine, something that is really of benefit and of value. So that's, that's really key. But, um, you know, uh, let me just read this passage out of, out of my book. The book of Proverbs gives us guidelines on how to instill and promote the fear of the Lord in the home. I like to call it the law of the home. The law of the home consists of the rules of the home that parents establish. In order for a household to operate properly, parents must establish rules and practices. These directives function to support the accomplishment of the goals of the home. If the parent's desire is to promote wisdom, then they need to purposely establish a law of the home that will aid in instilling a fear of the Lord. Now, according to Proverbs 2, 1 through 5, the purpose of the law of the home is to understand the fear of the Lord. Because again, in, two, five, in, Ch in Proverbs chapter 2, it says, If you'll receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that you incline your ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, if you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures, then you'll understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So what do we need in our homes? We need a law. We need what? Rules. Now, here's the deal. The law of the home is not intended to be a rod to beat the child in submission. The law of the home is intended to serve like reins on a horse. You pull it one way because you want them to go in that direction. And so the law of the home is continually supposed to direct the child towards the fear of the Lord. 
towards helping them to understand those things. So what do you do? You put in place guidelines and practices. You put in place, uh, you put in place rules. You put in place uh, structure and atmosphere. So you, maybe you prohibit some things, maybe you require some things, uh, maybe you uh, assign chores, maybe you assign this, maybe you assign that. And what is all of that supposed to do? It's supposed to help direct them towards the fear of the Lord. It's supposed to point them to God. You say, wait, are you saying that everything that I do in my house is supposed to point my child to God? Yes. Yes. Because it's supposed to be of such utmost value and utmost priority that we make it the primary focus of the home to direct the child towards the fear of the Lord. And so all of the rules that we have in place are not just rules to promote our authority. They're not just rules to, uh, to, to make us uh, feel good about ourselves or to keep up with this person or that person. They're there to help point and direct the child to the things of God. And they might be different than other people. Now, there, most homes do not have this as a priority. Most homes do not have this as their focus. So what do you need to do? You need to be different. You need to be different. I'll never forget when I was a child, uh, I can't remember what grade I was in. I probably think fourth, maybe fifth grade. I was in a Christian school and this particular Christian school <clears throat> was going to go on a field trip to the circus. This is back 80s, 90s, when it was still politically correct to go ahead and go to the circus, right? Uh, nowadays, they don't even exist anymore. Uh, but we were supposed to go to the circus, and it was being advertised on TV and everything. We were all going to go as a group to the circus. But my parents had seen the commercials, and they had seen some of the ways that some of the uh, artists and, uh, you, know, uh, ath ath you know, the trapeze and all that kind of stuff were dressing. I thought, you know what? We don't like the way that they're dressing. We don't think this is appropriate for you to go to. So they wouldn't let us go. They said, we're going to take that stand. Now, um, when I told all my friends at the school that I wouldn't be able to go, I, of course, had to tell them why. And they're like, ah, that's ridiculous. And they began to mock me and to make fun of me. Now, of course, I didn't enjoy that. And it didn't feel good. But my parents had not just said, look, we're just saying no. And the reason you can't go is because we're the mom and dad and we said no. They had told me, look, we don't think that this is right. We don't, we don't want you to, to be exposed to that, this particular style of dress uh, that, you know, that these, some of these uh, ladies and, and men were adhering to. So we don't want, we're not going to let you go. What did that do? Well, they, they, they not only said that, but they also said, look, we don't think this is what the Lord wants. They connected it to God and they said, look, we, we, we don't want this for our family. So did I enjoy that? Absolutely not. I wanted to go to the circus. Of course I did. It was cool. What kid doesn't want to go to the circus, right? But because my parents had done it in sincerity and because they had done it at a, at, as a desire to promote godliness within our home and out of a desire uh, to promote a certain thing within our, within our home itself, I realized that, well, they were actually taking a stand for the Lord. And I maybe didn't like it and I didn't necessarily agree with it because I was a little boy, but... I knew that they were doing it because they wanted, they wanted our family to serve God in this particular way, and we just weren't like every other family. We just didn't do things like everybody else. And so I didn't get bitter against that and reject it. I didn't like not being able to go on the trip, but I understood that this was the law of the home, and I actually embraced it. And when, when, when those boys or other boys were mocking me and making fun of me because I couldn't go, this, that, or the other thing, uh, I decided that I would take the law of the home and wear it like a necklace around my neck, like an ornament. Because I knew that mom and dad were taking a stand for the Lord. They weren't just saying no to be mean. They wanted me, able to be able, wanted me to be able to enjoy things. They wanted me, but, they, but I knew they were doing it because they felt this is what the Lord had for our family. And so what happened? That was the law of the home that directed me towards a fear of the Lord, even at a young age. Now, does that mean that your kid can't ever do anything in order for you to have a law of the home? No, it doesn't. The, because you see, my parents' decision on whether or not for us to go to the circus had absolutely, really, you know, it wasn't like there was not a verse in the Bible that said, thou shalt not go to the circus. <laughs> they were just building around certain principles and they had prioritized certain things in such a way that they knew that this particular event wouldn't fit within those priorities. And so they excluded it because their singular focus was trying to get us to grow in the fear of the Lord. My wife and I have the same desire. There are a lot of things that we don't allow in our house. There are a lot of things that we don't allow our children to do and, and other people do. And we don't judge other people because they allow them to do that. 
But we think that in our scale of priorities, we want our children to be directed to the fear of the Lord. We have strategized and implemented a law within our home to try to point them in that way. And so that's what we're hoping this will do. Do our children get disappointed sometimes that they can't do what everybody else is doing? Yes, they do. Uh, do they sometimes not understand it? No, they do not always understand it. That is correct. But one overriding thing that they do know and they do understand in our house is that we are directing them and pointing them to the fear of the Lord. And that's really where it comes down. We want, I want my children to embrace the law of the home, what we're doing, and, realize, and wear it with pride and say, yeah, this is what we do in our home because our priority is Jesus first, pointing our children in that direction. And that doesn't mean that I think everybody else is wrong for every single thing that they do. But in our home, the law is we're going to do these things because we prioritize them to point them to Jesus. There is so much more to this concept and this idea, and I would encourage you to take, uh, take a minute and, and order this book if you can. It's available on Amazon.com in both uh, paperback and electronic format, or you can contact me and, and we can help you get a copy as well. But the idea of the law of the home is that everything around the house, the house is built in such a way to point the child to a fear of the Lord so that they can get that number one thing, that priority in their life, that wisdom, that relationship with God that they need. I would just encourage you with that. Um, I hope that something in here that we talked about in this has been a blessing. And just remember to build your home around that priority. Build, your, build the rules, build the structure, uh, build your priorities, uh, build your daily schedule around that priority. If you don't make church a priority, your children won't. And statistics bear that out. If you don't make, uh, if you don't make attending the house of the Lord a, a priority, neither will your children. If you don't make uh, reading the scriptures a priority in your home, neither will your children. Because what you have to do is you have to establish a law. You have to establish precedent in your house. Maybe you think, oh, I don't like that law. It sounds like legalism. Okay, use a different term. Just make Jesus the number one priority in your home. That's the most important thing. Well, I hope this has been a blessing to you. And uh, if, you, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it. If you, are, if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. God bless you. You have a great week.